What is going on everybody? Evan here from Framed by Nature and I just wanted to give you guys a quick kind of behind the scenes look uh, how I shoot a lot of these snowflake photos that I've been posting lately. It's pretty simple. Uh, almost anybody with a camera can do it as long as you've just got a couple other uh, small cheap pieces of gear. So let's get into it. So the main things that you'll need are a good tripod, a headlamp or flashlight, a glass plate, and then obviously your camera with optional reversing ring. All right, so unfortunately I gotta take off my gloves for this, but uh, what that reversing ring does, so this is all it is. You can pick these up for five, 10 bucks on Amazon or eBay. Um, and one side is the camera mount flange portion of your camera. So if you can, it's like an EF mount. The other side is basically just a threaded filter, kind of like a UV filter that a lot of people put on their lenses to protect them. So what you do is you take your lens and on the front element of that lens, you just thread that thing on. And then once that's threaded on, on the opposite side of your lens, you now have your camera mount. So then you take your DSLR body, you line everything up, and then just like that, you've got a lens that's mounted in reverse to your camera. So this is called the reverse macro technique. Um, it's a really cheap and great way to get a macro lens with really high magnification uh, without spending a bunch of money on a brand new macro lens. So now that we've got our camera set up, let's check out the tripod and all the other gear. A couple of optional pieces of equipment for this are a set of focusing rails as well as extension tubes. Extension tubes will give you greater magnification. Focusing rails will basically just give you a slightly more controlled ability to get in your focus on the snowflakes. So having a really sturdy tripod is really important for this, um, but that being said, you don't actually need need one. I actually used to shoot these snowflake photos without a tripod at all. It just started to hurt my back after a certain amount of time, and I'm sure a lot of people can kind of sympathize with that. So um, I've got myself a nice enduro tripod, um, but really just about anything should work as long as it's pretty stable and doesn't shake in the wind or anything. So what we want to do is set up our tripod right over here right above this bucket, because that bucket's kind of gonna be the base for where we're taking these pictures. So I'm gonna take my macro focusing rails here, just mount them onto my tripod, lock those in. And these are a really simple tool. Um, they've basically just got some worm gears in here that allow you to make really, really fine adjustments, uh, both left, right, forwards, and backwards on your camera, um, so you can achieve proper focus. So, You'll get your tripod set up next to your bucket. And then the next thing is obviously get your camera on the tripod. All right, so now we've got our tripod and camera oriented looking straight down above our bucket. And this is where we're almost set up really. Um, next up, you wanna take your headlamp or flashlight, turn it on, place it in the bottom of the bucket, turn your camera on, You've got a live view setting, activate your live view. And then really you just need to line your flashlight up so it's dead center. I'm going to zoom to my maximum magnification on my lens here. Uh, maximum magnification, at least for me, on this lens with the first macro, is right at that minimum focal length of 18 millimeters. So as you can see, now we are fully within that circle of light on our LCD screen. So you've got your camera looking straight down the bucket, right at the flashlight. And then this is kind of what we're gonna use in order to line up our shots really quickly. So I've just got this piece of spare drywall I had sitting around here. I'm going to line up one of these holes directly beneath the camera. And as you can see, just have to dial it in there and get it centered. So now, we know that when we get a snowflake on our plate, we just have to put it right over that hole and everything will line up. Our last step here, be to go and get your glass plate. <laughs> I've actually got a few snowflakes on here already. And then you'll basically just want to catch some snowflakes on that glass plate. This process is gonna vary a little bit based on your type of snow, but got some nice dendrites today, it looks like. So then you'll take your glass plate. I kind of like to scan the plate, see what ones I really like.
pick one out. I kind of like one on this left side, right there. So I will line that guy up right underneath our camera and right over that hole right there. So we turn on our live view here. We're already pretty close. So just line that up perfectly now. And then this is where those macro rails really come in handy. So I'm just moving one of these dials a little bit. And that is going to allow me to bring the snowflake into proper focus. Just about there. I like to use my little zoom buttons here to make sure I've got it as tack sharp as possible. And there we have it. We've got proper focus achieved on our snowflake. I've got one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, another not necessary, but super helpful piece of equipment plugs in right here. This is called a remote shutter uh, cable release. And basically that allows you to take pictures without touching your camera. So that's really important for minimizing things like camera shake and stuff like that. You'll end up with sharper pictures and uh, <laughs> there's nothing worse than getting back to your computer and seeing a bunch of blurry snowflake pictures. So that's pretty much the basic setup. All right, so obviously that's just one way to set up a snowflake shoot. There's a ton of different ways to do it. It's just kind of the way that I've arrived at over the last couple of years because putting a glass plate down over a light, putting your camera above it seems really simple. So that's what I like doing. It allows me to get through a lot of snowflakes really quickly without having to take, you know, 40 or 50 frames per snowflake to get something in proper focus. So uh, if you guys have other ideas for modifying this setup or maybe you shoot snowflakes and you shoot them differently, let me know in the comments. I'd love to check out how you shoot them or even edit your snowflakes. Next up, we're just gonna head inside really quick, warm up our hands and edit one of our pictures. All right, guys, we're back inside now, warming up our hands a little bit since it's only about five degrees out today. So it's definitely good to take a little break. So we're just gonna open our snowflake image here in Adobe Camera Raw. And as you can see, we've got this one nice and sharp. If you've seen my pictures online before, you know that they generally end up being a white snowflake with a darker background. And how I do that is actually inverting the color in Photoshop. So the first thing I do in Adobe Camera Raw is take out all the saturation and then really just play with your sliders just enough to bring back some of that detail. Uh, maybe add a little bit of sharpening or a little noise reduction as well, it can't hurt. Um, and definitely do some masking on your sharpening so it doesn't create a bunch of artifacts or more noise. That can really help bring out a lot of the detail and suppress noise and kind of put the focus on the snowflake. So once we've got that looking pretty close to how we want it, go ahead and click Open in Photoshop. Now I'm gonna hit Command-I for Invert, which will give us a white snowflake on a black background. I'll switch my image mode to RGB, and then finally, under Adjustments, I'll change the hue and saturation. Uh, you can be creative and do really whatever color you want here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and colorize the image with a nice blue tone. Um, I might adjust my saturation to add a little bit more color or even up the lightness so our background isn't quite so dark. And that's pretty much it. We inverted the image in Photoshop, added a little bit of color, and that's really all you need to do. If you want, you can maybe take a spot healing brush and go around and clean up some of these blemishes. Ideally, try to shoot with a clean plate of glass so you don't have to do this in post. And really, that's it for the editing, so thanks again for watching everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes look at my snowflake photography. I'll be sure to leave a few links in the description to help get you started if you're just looking to get into macro photography. And of course, please feel free to like and subscribe for more photography and nature content. See you next time.